Wassail, if you haven't seen our video on Proto-Germanic phonology and runes, you may want to watch that first. Either way, here's a summary. Because Old English dropped over long vowels, we're not going to talk about them. From this point, Proto-Germanic back vowels exhibited a strong tendency towards fronting. For no vowel was that tendency stronger than for Ethel. Not only did it fly straight past the schwa, but in Wessex its sound almost immediately merged into that of E. Like anything run into by a fast-moving projectile, E was consequently knocked out of place and began moving upwards. As it was already interchangeable with EO for the long mid-front bow, that caused it to take over its short sound as well. Now although Ethel had merged into E in West Saxon, Anglian dialects maintained the rounded versus unrounded distinction. Nonetheless, when E moved, it dragged Ethel along with it. Meanwhile, a short form of Ethel developed. In case you thought this close front corner wasn't already crowded enough, Ur also fronted, but only in certain positions, which led to the creation of this unusual bind rune predominantly based upon Ur, but with Is inside it. That left only one rune covering almost half the vowel space. As you might expect, given its position in the corner, it split in three. In some positions, it followed the popular trend and fronted while being dragged slightly up, giving us the rune Ash. In others, it rounded and moved to fill the position vacated by Ethel, but ended up caught in the tide as the open mid vowels shifted to close mid vowels, resulting in Ors. While in yet other positions, it stayed exactly where it had always been. However, in a changing phonological landscape, the Anglo-Saxon rune masters wisely realized the need to keep these three related runes looking visually similar, lest people become confused by them as different dialects shifted in different ways. As the sound in the middle, Ark ended up with a broken lower branch. At this point, if you haven't been following the notes on screen, may I draw your attention to the one in the lower right, right now. The Futhark Ash kept the original shape of the Futhark Ansus. Ark kept its original sound, Ah, while Ors kept its original position in the rune row, that is, fourth. Now, do you remember that pesky rune Eo? This is where the name everybody calls it by becomes apparent. Having become squished between four other runes, it needed to escape. One of the ways it did that was to diphthongize, thus becoming one of Old English's three main diphthongs. However, the way it did so varied from dialect to dialect. Consequently, this sound later became known as unstable I. Significantly for our purposes, at one stage, in certain parts, it made the E sound, which is today used by many English speakers as the fleece vowel. But not to jump the gun, we should first note another significant difference between West Saxon and Anglian dialects. Anglian had the eu sound, which Latin scribes transcribed as I-O, even though it slid towards the rounded close back vowel, which may explain why this rune is better attested in the north. Did you notice how that diphthong sounded a little like a certain consonant? Finally, Old English had the word now, which later became near, then near, as in modern usage. Hence why I've repeatedly said on this channel that there's a good case for using this rune for the square vowel. 
but given its history and continued development, there's probably a better case for using it as the near vowel today, yet that discussion belongs in another video. That concludes our brief look at Old English phonology and runes. After all those changes, how well do you think a Proto-Germanic speaker could have understood an Old English speaker? Next up, we'll investigate how this understanding of the relationship between Old English phonology and runes can help us build a feasible writing system for modern English foot talk. Till then, please like, subscribe, and share this video far and wide. Thanks for watching. Thank you.